Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Unbelievable. SmackDown's just wrapping up at the Thunderdome, and I don't even have a watch on to tell me that, but I do know a brand new Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays is now. Wrestling fans, Boston Wrestling MWF Summer of 7 p.m. Seven nights a week has exploded online. Join the superstars and legends on Wrestling Insiders every night at 7 p.m. Spread the word. As first reported to our Boston Wrestling MWF family on Patreon, big things are happening as we wrap up our biggest spring ever and kick off our summer of 7 p.m. beginning Memorial Day night when brand new Wrestling Insider episodes premiere at 7 p.m. seven days per week. We also kick off our Make-A-Wish Drive in high gear to help grant wishes to awesome kids that have been waiting over a year in many cases. After an extreme Saturday with New Jack and a demolition doubleheader with Axe, put the women and children to bed as fresh from the Shawn Michaels A&E biography, Marty Jannetty returns for a party with Marty triple header Friday, June 18th, Saturday, June 19th, and then joining us again for the WWE Hell in a Cell pay-per-view Sunday, June the 20th, taping episodes of Wrestling Insiders, watch-alongs, and cyber autograph signings. It's going to be a huge weekend that demands fan involvement. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com for complete information and pre-ordering option. Let's help keep wrestling legends working and great wrestling talk show content being produced. We can't do it without you. Help us explode into summer seven nights a week at 7 p.m. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas. The road to WrestleMania has begun. Wrestling fans are looking to add to their man caves you got to see what we have in the eBay store. Check it out! At Night of Champions 2020, Tribal Chief Roman Reigns successfully defended the WWE Universal Championship against his cousin, Jey Uso, in a must-see battle. Here is your chance to own a piece of Roman Reigns moments before battle on this beautiful limited edition autographed 11 by 14 poster direct from friends at WWE. It's number 19 of only 50 made. Includes WWE authentication hologram on the poster itself. Suitable for framing and matting, you'll also also receive a bonus Legends autographed 8x10 photo in an on-air shout-out on Wrestling Insiders as our thanks for helping keep wrestling legends working. Get this ultra-rare Roman Reigns autograph poster now! Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year of unknown with professional wrestling content galore, and we need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after we review the previous night's Monday Night Raw, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with the unpredictable WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights after WWE, NXT, and AEW at 10 p.m., you never know who's going to show up on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey Through the 80s and 90s on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday nights after the lights go down at the Thunderdome on SmackDown, it's John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. If you want early, ad-free access to all of our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and to help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Lawndorf. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Inside. It's Dan Marotti, along with your host with the most, Mr. John Cena Sr. Johnny, I don't know how you fit us in your schedule. You're so busy, brother. Well, you know what? It's always an honor and a privilege to come down here, sit at this table with you, and agree to disagree and still be friends, and at the same time, reach a lot of those wrestling fans out there. And I tell you this, a lot of the wrestling fans, as they continue to watch our Wrestling Insider programs, I'm, I'm so hoarse. 
from all the interviews that we do. But they are, it's almost like a wedding. They are saving the date. Saturday night, November the 13th, back to the 80s WrestleFest at Memorial Hall, Melrose, Massachusetts. It's going to be that interactive fan fest where the fans can meet the legends from the 80s. You know, it, it's one of those fine lines you have to think of sometimes where, sadly, not everybody's going to be around forever. I mean, you look at Road Warrior Animal, who was originally going to join us not only uh, at the event, but here in the studio. We're not going to have that opportunity. So you never know when it comes to the, because of the lives they led, the great legends of the 80s, you never know when it could be the last chance you have to meet them. And I know that sounds very morbid. I know a couple of wise guys accused me of, oh, you're trying to, to sell death. I'm just trying to push reality a little bit. You know what I mean? Not all of these guys even physically will be able to get out of the house forever. How much would we love to have Iron Sheik with us? But again, physically, it's virtually impossible for him to get out of the house more than once or twice a year. And I that's just, sad to me. Yeah, I wish he'd come back. I, yeah. I really enjoy Sheiky Baby, but, um, you know, physically he just doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want the fans to see him the way he is. Yeah. And you can understand that. Uh, but you know what? I don't care. I, I think the fans wouldn't care what he looked like or what he was. I agree. They love the Iron Sheik. And Sheiky Baby, you got to know how much you're in my heart and everybody out there wants to see you because they love you. So think about it, Sheiky Baby. Come on out. Well, you know, maybe we'll send that message along. That was heartfelt. And people know my feelings on the Sheik. We have had some adventures. We've had some misadventures. He wound up on the Howard Stern Show daily. At least his voice and my voice as a result of that video we did here when he wanted to uh, violate Brian Blair to be PC, I guess. But we've traveled to Canada. We've traveled to Las Vegas. We've traveled all over the country. I have to say, Johnny, and you know me, I am a Virgo. I am not the world's biggest people person, but I do love Sheiky Baby. And it would be very sad if he left us and I didn't have a chance to have a real goodbye with him. It was nice that Tony Atlas and I had our little mini reunion at WrestleCon a couple of years ago, but it was two or three minutes. I'd like to have, you know, a chance to just sit down and... Well, you worked the show with Tony. Tony did well. He, you know, things were no, well. But I mean, I just, I'm talking about Sheik. I'd oh. love to sit down and before it's all said and done and just... You know, where we've had such a unique relationship, literally, the headliner, to Tony and the Sheik of Tony Rumble's first show that I ever worked back in 1993 when I was a freshman in high school. So there's quite a history there, but that's a different story for a different time, Tony. Did I just call you Tony? You did. I did. I'm sorry. You don't look like Shrek. That's um, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be associated You've been with called Tony worse. Atlas. You've been to called nah, worse, right? No, Tony's a good man. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, a lot of talk in the world of women's wrestling. Um, a lot of talk in the world of women's wrestling. We talked about Trash Bag Gate in one of our recent episodes where your good friend, Mickey James, uh, a friend of the entire Cena clan, apparently, in some way, shape, or form. This has been reported over the years by old oh, Kenny Dykstra. You know what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Kenny Dykes was a good friend. Yeah, he's retired from professional wrestling. Yes, very young. Yep, thirty-five. Smart man. He'll but be back. Yeah, but nah, yeah, about will. that. They I, all come back. I know. I don't know about that. Um, but you know what? I don't know if there's any truth to what Mister Dykstra says. Maybe he's just a wounded lover. You know, maybe she said goodbye and he couldn't take the hit. They were buying a house in West Virginia, or whatever. I just, I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Even, I'm not privy to that. No, do I care about that? Um, that's personal. Keep it personal. You know, why degrade a woman and yourself and a third party? Rumors are just that. Well, I mean, rumors. I think he would probably know if it was more than a rumor or not. <laughs> has it been proven? To be, uh, well, I, I don't know if there's any video footage. Hopefully, well, not been proven? there's no video footage. Nobody's come out and said yes. And that includes the accusers. So you know what? Keep your mouth shut. Don't degrade anyone at any cost. If it is, it is. If it isn't, it isn't. Personally, I don't know. And secondly, I could really give a shit. Well, I do have to, to say... To put it bluntly, folks. You don't give a shit. No, I don't. There was a statement made by the, the fruit of your loins at one point that he did say he wished he had a chance because of time constraints to pursue something with her. So I think maybe sometimes, what's the phrase where there's smoke, there's fire? You know what? There's a lot of young ladies out there that I'd like to have time to pursue some stuff with. And you don't not have enough show. time. But you know what? 
<laughs> Please. You know, words are nice. Not my job. Words are nice, but it doesn't mean that I've gone out and, 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 and done what everybody's accusing everybody of. You know, I think at some point you've got to use your head, and maybe it's a way to get maybe you back. Maybe she in did a, use her head. Well, maybe it's a way to get you back in the spotlight. Who well, knows? And you, and and who and really and you cares? never know. Well, it was a point of discussion. Well, anyway, back to Mickey. Um, she had more to add to Trash Bag Gate. She, uh, uh, along the lines of how you and I have had conversations over the years, came up with the concept, or I don't know if she was the originator of it, or was maybe not the first, but <clears throat> had discussions with WWE officials about, with all of our different platforms, why don't we try and create an all-hour women's show? She was very excited, very animated about it, and the response she got was, Mickey, we tried the WWE Evolution pay-per-view in response to having the events in Saudi Arabia that had all men on them. Uh, it was the least watched pay-per-view we've ever had. There is frankly no money to be made with the women. So my point of thought, my point of train of thought, I should say, with that is, if there's no money to be made with the women, if nobody went out of their way to watch this tremendous uh, revolutionary pay-per-view that they wanted everybody to see that was such a flop, they never followed up on it. They never did a second one. Uh, in New York, just to say they could sell the building out, they were selling tickets for 3 and $5. Why do they continue to over-push them? <laughs> That's all I want to know. Why do they keep pushing them if nobody wants to see them and they're not making any money off of them? Is it just to be politically correct? Because as a stockholder, I don't give a shit about being politically correct. I'd rather them invest my money a little more wisely. What do you own, five shares? Six. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I, I mean, mean, honestly, why? I'm going to invest in Pfizer. Yeah, yeah. That's, that would be your next big one. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, I think that's going to really pop, especially with the booster shot. Anyway, um, my thought is this. I think the reason that the women's wrestling has not taken off is, one, the way they used women in the past. The fans expect that same kind of degradation and misuse of these female wrestlers today. That's not going to happen, number one. Number two. Let's go back to the Royal Rumble, which I was very adamant oh. and very, you know, explicit about. Why, why in God's name would you bring out that 24-7 trash? Why would you interrupt a woman's match? You basically said to millions of fans, we really don't care about the women's match. The men are more important. You know what? Here's a lollipop because you really suck. Wow. I'm telling you. How do you yeah. really feel? No, I'm sorry. That's wrong. You would know. You would never, ever do that to a men's match. Bring well, them. you know what? No. To be fair, I felt they disrespected the men's match when they sent out Big Nia Jax back in Phoenix a couple of years ago and was eliminating men. I did not like that. And you know what's funny? You know who Nia took out on the way to the ring to take their spot? Do you remember? Ah, uh, truth. So isn't you know that kind of funny? I just think how you look at the Japanese women wrestlers. Oh, much different. Yep. Huge, huge. Because what's happened is I don't think that the women in professional wrestling today have been allowed to use those fancy moves that they can use. If you bring that caliber of wrestling up and stop this foolishness with the promos and this foolishness with the storylines, I think they'd be a change. Um, and, and for some reason, somebody doesn't want that to happen. But you know what, again, to be fair, for the past six years, they have tried to present the women's wrestling more seriousness, seriously in better positions on the show. It's taken over almost a third of the show sometimes on Raw, which I think is part of the reason the ratings have gone down. One of the reasons... Uh, Adnan and the commentary team is oh, another, please. as we've discussed. But, please. I mean, six years of, okay, let's give divas a chance. We're now treating them as women's wrestlers. We're not even going to call them divas anymore. We're just going to refer to them as superstars. Where is it gone? Nowhere. Because Nobody the caliber cares. of wrestling hasn't escalated to the point... You don't think the caliber of women's wrestling has been a now? 
than when it was the Bellas oh, yeah. and Alicia well, Fox. Oh, yeah, it was and, bra and panties and pillow yeah, well, fights. I know you like the bra and, and panties. And, but, and, you know, Vicky Guerrero and Thrown in the Mud and all this crap. You know what, please. Jerry Lawler's girlfriend, when she hit the mud, we had an accident with that one. Uh, remember that? Yes. But um, I just kind of sit back and say, you know what, I, I don't think there's been enough thought given to this. I think it really is, and you alluded to it earlier, was, okay, we want to be politically correct. You know what, sometimes that's not the answer. Sometimes the answer is, put your brain in motion, let's think it out, let's make it work. Let's take a lesson from our Japanese uh, partners out there, how they make this woman's wrestling really work. I remember where I told you earlier, I worked a show down in Connecticut. Um, Ric Flair was on the card. We had a lot of fun with Rick. He was a referee in the match. But they, the Nasty Boys, Lafisto, against, um, I forget who the other side was, but the Nasty Boys actually took this female Canadian wrestler, outstanding, and she still wrestles. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing her down here. They picked her up and put her through a table. Amazing. And the fans were on their feet for this female wrestler. So done properly, done right, I believe in my heart it will work. If I didn't believe so strongly about it, I would not continue to push it. I still think that they're not 100% behind the movement. But it's, they, for six years, Johnny, they've tried to reinvent the wheel with the way they've presented them. But they still, They've given them WrestleMania main events, and nobody cares. But when they give them a WrestleMania main event, if you let's take a look at 37. You know, out there hugging and crying. And, oh. Please, you know what? You knew the finish before the match even Thank began. Thank you very much. So, you know what? What have you just done? What you you see Roman Reigns out there hugging his uh, no yeah, or crying no, before so. it began he wasn't crying either was he you know I do want to say Johnny I don't know if the guys can cut to the wide shot in the other room I have th this one has grown on me Bianca Belair oh the girl I think with, she, the, with she, the hair extension with the, what do you call it a cue it's a cue she is uh, very uh, likable I think her promos come across as sincere. She and her husband, Montez Ford of the Street Prophets, they are a spiritual, religious people. I like Amen. that an awful yep. lot. I think she sends across a, a great message, uh, and I hope she's someone WWE continues to push. Her in-ring work, is, is there room for improvement? Sure. Absolutely. But that can be said for just about everybody. Absolutely. But, I mean, as opposed to, like I've said before, what drives me nuts, like Sasha, ba uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey almost doing cosplay wrestling, well, I want to do Macho Man's elbow, and I want to do Eddie Guerrero's leapfrog. And, you know, this one goes out there by Bianca and wrestles her own style. And I think that's what you need more of. Should Charlotte Flair emulate a little bit from Dad? I think so. I th from the, uh, not, not move for move. There's only one Ric Flair. Woo! You know the problem in, this, in the What's business? Let's hear it, brother. Why did Bruno San Martino's son not make it? Because he tried to be another Bruno San Martino. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I say this to my sons every single day. I say it every... Be yourself, and you will succeed. You know, there are people that we hold up as examples, and we don't emulate what they do and understand because you want to be successful. You'll be successful if you take your mentor and be yourself. Be the character that you are. That's what's wrong. That's what's wrong. In 30 seconds or less, Johnny, how could WWE launch an all-women's wrestling program either on TV or on Peacock? You can't do it in 30 seconds or less. You need a lot more time I than do. that to dissect it. All right, wrestling fans. Well, with that said, we're going to... Look at that. They're not even cutting to me. They don't even want to put my face on. They are. There he goes. The Mass Justin back there. Forget about the Mass Singer on Fox. We have the Mass Justin, uh, even though his birthday is coming up June 28th, Johnny. But his internship will be done. <laughs> My birthday's coming up in June, too. That's right. Well, you know, we're going to have a big party for that. June 18th, that's what, it. If you're in the premiere, folks, what do you think it would take to launch a all-WWE women show? If you're watching the premiere live, give us your thoughts. The Super Chat button is always open to help us keep the lights on. And, of course, if you watch after the fact, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. We always read them, even if we don't have a chance to respond because we just get so many hundreds each week. We'll be back after this brief timeout with more Wrestling Insider Fabulous Friday. Stand by.
Wrestling fans, Boston Wrestling MWF Summer of 7 p.m. Seven nights a week has exploded online. Join the superstars and legends on Wrestling Insiders every night at 7 p.m. Spread the word. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. Support Wrestling Insiders and keep wrestling legends working on eBay. At Survivor Series, it was champion versus champion as WWE champion Drew McIntyre battled Universal champion Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman. Get this 11 by 14 poster autographed by all three men. Limited edition number 42 of only 50 with authentication hologram on the back of the poster itself. Comes with a mystery autographed 8 by 10 photo and an on-air shout-out from WWE Hall of Fame or Mr. USA Tony Atlas on Wrestling Insiders at your house. Get it now. Wrestling fans, especially here in the Boston area, we want to thank our great friends at Red Rose for their support for all of our charitable endeavors and programming efforts. Red Rose is two years young and extremely thankful for all the support they've had from our neighbors here in Melrose and beyond for an amazing first two years. Red Rose thanks Melrose and all of the first responders who have fought the good fight and have never given up hope during these unprecedented times. We did it together. Follow Red Rose on Facebook for their anniversary special, facebook.com backslash Red Rose Melrose. You'll be glad you did. Open until 2 a.m. Red Rose will give you fresh, piping hot, mouth-watering food that'll put an ear-to-ear -ear smile on even the toughest critic's face. Check out their full menu online at redrosema.com or give them a call 781-620-1889. All right, wrestling fans, welcome back to Wrestling Inside. As we talked about Mickey James' interesting interaction with WWE officials who told her that basically uh, women's wrestling isn't making any money and they don't want to overinvest in them even though they shove them down the fan's throat. I can't count on my hands how many Raws I've seen within the past year where they haven't had a, rest, a female wrestler wrestle more than once on the show just because of the lack of depth they have. That's another problem for, the brand, for both shows overall is the lack of depth where you see so many of the same talents and repetitive segments week after week, month after month, year after year at this point. I don't think any wrestler should be on TV every week to begin with. I think it takes away from the surprise factor, the must-see TV factor about it. There's very few Major League Baseball players that play 162 games a year. I think if you rotated it where each talent appeared maybe two or three times a month, I think they'd have more value as opposed to having them every week. One man's opinion. But Less is better. What's that now? Less is better. Less is more, as Jake the Snake used to say. Uh, let me throw this one out at you, Johnny. We talked about Trash Bag Gate with uh, Mickey James. Uh, Chelsea Green was also released, the significant other of Zack Ryder. She received her trash bag, but it was... <laughs> Fifty Shades of Green? Well, she lost her... The, she lost the green. name to her uh, podcast. Oh, they, they cease and desist. Cease and desist. Stop, you can't use it. We own the name. And now she's changed it to Green with Envy. So we'll see how long that one lasts. Uh, you think we're going to get another cease and desist? <laughs> I don't think McMahon, I don't think that, well, Fifty Shades of Green. I don't know if that came from WWE. Or from the movie Fifty from Shades the movie of Grey. She's, right. So, uh, plus, she has a copyright out there for that name. Yeah. It's still active. Let's see who complains about it. That's the key right there. Um, I, could, I would think, I'd be right up front, if I were a WWE official, I could really care. Go do your shit. I mean, Have a good yeah, day. That's what I mean. Even Have a good day. I get better, better things to do and bigger fish to fry. Yep. Um, well, in her trash bag, she received lots of things that had nothing to do with her. Boots Natalia that weren't stuff. hers. Clothes that weren't hers. Natalia stuff. A basketball. <laughs> I mean, how little thought was put into Chelsea's trash bag? Well, it almost sounds like they're going to let Natalia go, doesn't it? No kidding, right? Yeah. If it was all hers. Yeah. yeah. Somebody, somebody really let the cat out of the bag. And I'll tell you, if they let her go, that's another mistake. That would but be a mistake. That's, that's between you and I. I would have her, honestly, she would, I would have her agent the women's matches. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very she much. She has that good of a mind for the business. That's in, where in she my belongs. Opinion, That's where she belongs. Yeah. I agree. I 100% we agree on that. Um, whoever played Trashgate, and Mott Carano happened to be the fall guy, I guess. Um, but I don't think he was the guy packing the trash bags. Uh, well, he may have been the general to give the army the instructions. To fill the trash bags. Right. But whoever the little soldier was that was supposed to fill them, it's kind of like Santa Claus delivering to the wrong house. I'd find out who the hell did that. And there's another one down the tube. And then you tell the woman, but just drop it off at X's house. I mean, can you imagine you've been fired, you've lost your job, which is crushing on the inside. That's like a death to a lot of people, depending upon how much they enjoy their job. Then you get this box this, with a trash bag in it, which you think is your stuff put in a trash bag. Then you go through it. It's not even yours. Then you call the office to tell them, and they say, well, can you drop it off at that person's we'll house? Take it to Natty's house. Yeah, we'll bring it to Natty's house. Can you house. believe that? Insane. Insane. So you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Whoever has said, we're sorry, and now they just turned around and said, put it in a box and take it over to Natalia. Like they you're a UPS sin- driver or something? But they're not sincere. No, right. Well, I, I don't know, Johnny. And again, in the world of women's wrestling, we talk about it being overdone. I talk about it being overdone and overkill. Uh, you had one of the mistakes, I thought, of the year was trying to induct two classes of the Hall of Fame in one night. <laughs> it was too much. There was no interest. I think they just should have hit the pause button until fans could come back for the Hall of Fame. Because I generally like it, even though it can be a long night. Uh, your good friend, longtime close personal friend, Molly Holly was crushed, Johnny, by with what happened at the Hall of Fame. It was her big night. Uh, she was included. I don't think she is a Hall of Fame worthy candidate. I think she was a very solid female women's talent. I don't think she did anything above and beyond to warrant a Hall of Fame induction, much like your good, close, longtime personal friends, the Bellas, who were inducted the same year. But where I felt for Molly Johnny was when she was originally booked for it, she was told to prepare a 15-minute speech. I guess she has her regular 9-to-5 job that you assisted with in some way as far as trying to guide her in the right direction when she uh, went for that after-wrestling movement in her life. And then she was told a few days before the induction that she was practicing, I think she said, about 60 hours. She'd go for a walk every day after work. She'd prepare the speech. She'd try and recite the speech. And then, a couple days before the Hall of Fame induction, they said, well, Molly, instead of 15, we got about two, two and a half minutes for you. (laughs) So my question becomes, because I like being the devil's advocate, how many men's speeches did you ask to go to two, two and a half minutes? But you did, didn't. how much you didn't. did she have to add in those two and a half well, minutes? Well, you know what? First of all, <coughs> God bless me. you, sir. Thank you. It's the dust in the studio. Um, all the construction we got. Oh, it's brutal. Things are changing. Things are changing at Boston Wrestling. I said it before. I'll say it again. Keep your eye on Boston Wrestling. Big changes coming. Good changes. Do you have Saturday, November the 13th in your calendar? I hope you got me booked. I'm there. It's in the calendar? I'm there. It's there. Well, I know there's a certain individual with the initial CZ you're looking to try and throw out with the rest of the the desks and whatnot. (laughs) Oh, I hope. I thought he was already gone. Well, no, no, no. The uh, club cam and the uprising faction that you left in his hands erroneously during one of your suspensions from David Reese, uh, CZ, Mr. Zagami, is still... uh, a fixture is Well, then now. all I can say is this. If Sagami's on the card, I'm not. I thought... You heard it from me. If Sagami is on that card, I'm not part of the card. I thought in, you in were ready to, for uh, the total elimination. No, I want nothing to do with them. I won't even be on the same card with really? them. Really? I will not. So, you da fans, I've let the cat out of the bag. Anyway, I would be very interesting. We don't know what Molly Holly really had to say. We don't know who she had to thank, what her words were. Um, It's unfortunate that people are tagged that way. And like I say again, look, first of all, I'm not this guy that runs around, hey, women this, women that. I just say what I feel because it's true. And it's true. They didn't cut one male speech. Nobody went up to any of those guys and said, hey, 
Uh, we got two minutes for you. You don't know that. Well, but we're I'll bet you it didn't happen. All right, I'll speculate. But I'll bet you it didn't happen. You were there. You watched it. You saw all that went down. I know Ozzy Osbourne's speech was very short, that he shot on a cell phone in his backyard. Uh, well, that was really needed. Well, thank you. Okay. So all I'm going to say is this. I think she did a hell of a job when she was there. Very solid, very reliable, very likable, work very helpful. Hurricane Helms as a superhero. Yeah. She did the little farm girl bit. She received a lot of concussions. Oh, um, really? That young lady. Um, she, she put worked, her hair on the line at WrestleMania 20? She did indeed. And that was her idea. And, um, you know, every time I meet her and see her, I'm just glad. I, I, that you get woman, a hug. I get a hug. I really do. <laughs> yeah. She's a wonderful young Don't lady. Don't let my Josie. Wonderful, wonderful human being. And, you know, someday maybe she'll let the full story of her life out. But um, Maybe we can have her here in studio. You can I'd interview her. I'd love to have her here in the studio. She is one sweet human being. Um, a real, real... I met her in OVW uh, with John. Um, they were working a show. She was what, Lady Ophelia or something like that? Uh, I, I don't remember. I don't, I don't, she wasn't a Holly but yet. I know she that. She was. What a tremendous person. Um, a great human being. Um, you know, I, I said it before, and I guess I'll say it again. I, I, I've had enough beatings already when I'm on Google News for doing this stuff with you. Uh, people are really upset at what I say. And you know what? You really don't give a shit. Uh, let's go face to face. Email me. I'm, I'll respond to your emails. Um, my whole thing is this. Um, and it's really, again, as I said earlier, it's my opinion. Only my opinion. Um, where was I going with this thing? Oh, my God. I lost my train of Two thought. Two and a half minute speech you was cut to. Yeah, but that was where that I was. That wasn't in. No, no. I lost my train of thought on that now. I just think that Hall of Fame this year oh. was just... A, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'll go back to what I originally thought of. Um, they're so hot up to find people to induct into the Hall of Fame. I look at some of these people, and you know what? I said it. I'll say it again. I don't want to offend any nationality, but Kali doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. Well, All right? There's one reason why I feel he does. And it is because it has nothing to do with, you know, trying to make the Indian market happy. He was a former world champion. And to me, that should be the litmus test. If you were a, some version of a WWE world champion, I think that puts you in that class. So now you just eat your words. What do you mean? Molly Holly was a former WWE women's champion. So I'm not Molly, counting. I'm not talking intercontinental tag You're team. eating your own words, I'm talking buddy. about a WWE oh. world champion. The man couldn't wrestle. He did nothing for the wrestling world. Yeah, he might have been a champion. That's not the qualifications to put somebody in the Hall of Fame. He cost The Undertaker a spot at SummerSlam 2006 because their matches were so bad live. He was a great guy. I had an opportunity to meet him. He was a good human being. He was a friendly guy. He was a nice person. A Hall of Famer? He's not. I'm, I'll stick to my guns. People, you want to yell and scream at me? Go right ahead. Either you agree or disagree, but it's my opinion. And I'm entitled to mine, and you're entitled to yours. No way, Jose. You know who got a great match out of him? It, I believe it was an Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Your son. Uh, it was yes. like a, yes. It was like a monster movie, almost. And he worked hard at that yes. match. And I will tell you this. I bet they took F a lot. U, the FU, that was a deadlift. No start. Deadlift. Wouldn't even assist. Well, so maybe no, didn't know how to. Uh, well, but, all right, how. but there you go. You're going to put him in. Why am I not in the Hall of Fame? Celebrity Hall of Fame. And you know, this is a dangerous man. He killed a student while he was training in California. Please, please. You know what? I don't want to go there because I have no bad words. Yeah. I don't dislike the human being. I think he's a great human being. He's a wonderful man, and he did a lot for his own country. Hooray! But not Hall of Fame material. Any more than the two ladies that they threw out there, and you want to talk about the females, any more than that. I, I think it was too soon, too early. Let me ask you this, though, as we get ready to go to break. Do you think that that should be the litmus test, the cutoff for the Hall of Fame? If you have been a former WWE World Champion, that is the credential. That, if... No. Really? You think there are world champions that do not belong in the Hall of Fame? Yes, because understand really? one thing. 
The World Championship is determined by how many asses can you put in the seat and when Vince wants to take the belt off you and, and put it on somebody else. How many champions have you seen that can't hold the belt, can't make it work? Jack Swagger. Well, yeah, well, but Would you know you what? Would you consider him a WWE Hall of Famer? He was a world champion. But you know what? He worked well with Zeb Coulter. I think that might yeah. be... There's some, you know, you got to give and take here. And I think you got to look at that picture. The title has nothing to do with qualification to the Hall of Fame. All right, well, we nothing. disagree. We disagree. We can still disagree. And be friends. And still be friends. Frenemies. One of the We're other. We're friends. We're fr really? Yeah, we're friends. You got the cross on. Well, I, I got a lot of compliments on this beautiful cross. Uh, as a man of Catholic faith, it was given to me by my partner in crime here, Mr. Cena. I appreciate it a great deal. He understands my uh, trials and tribulations in life. And, you know, he tries to guide me in the ways he can. I've got a lot of compliments on this. You know, I'd also have got some compliments on Johnny. The Moss. Thanks to our good friends over at really? Noel Salon, nice. 347 Pleasant Street, downtown Malden, Mass. For all the information, head on over to noelsalon.com, 781-324-9779. Uh, i got to stop Some in. beautiful women, especially one uh, that a little jealous of my Joe, Ayanna Lizzo Pollock. Was very interested in having you come down and do a little snip snip and then maybe do a little snipping of a different kind in the back room. I would be very happy to visit the salon. I don't need a snip snip or a snip snip. First of all, the lady from Brooklyn would probably kill me. Moniz. You've never seen Ayanna Lizzo, Paul. Well, let's go down and say hello. You, maybe we need to. We'll go down on and one say of your hello. future visits. We'll go, yes, we will. I'm, I'll bring him Fabo Puff. We'll bring him a little Fabo Puff. The ladies can enjoy a little soda on their break. There you go. And they've been excited to meet you for a long time. Everybody pops for Fabo Pop. Well, in more ways than one. Thank you. All right, wrestling fans, we'll be back after this brief time oh, cut. with more wrestling insiders. Fabulous Friday. Stand by. WWE is coming home to Kansas City with Monday Night Raw. WWE is back with Monday Night Raw in Kansas City, Monday, July 26th. Tickets on sale now. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. And this is the man of the hour, Leo Rush. It was all over bostonwrestling.com and our social media. But Leo, brother, they got to check out some of this merch. They got to. Check it out, fans, right now available on eBay. As the Demon, he became the first WWE Universal Champion at SummerSlam 2016. Here's your chance to own this limited edition collector's autographed art print, personally signed by Finn Balor, one of only 50 made, direct from our friends at WWE. Also signed by original artist Rob Schamberger. Help keep wrestling legends working. Get this awesome collectible for your wrestling collection now. Ah... Uh... Cheer! Why, hello! I would ask what was on your mind, but I already know. You want to know what has got my beard looking oh so majestic. And I'll tell you, it's sexy as hell beard care. Coconut oil, vitamin E oil, almond oil, both sweet and bitter, shea butter, it's all natural. Yes, JTG has actually come out with a high quality product. So support your boy by going to sahbeardcare.com and take one step closer to becoming sexy as... Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, Dan Marotti, John Cena Sr., we're talking trash bags, we're talking about basketballs, we're talking about ex-WWE female superstars has to be UPS drivers, we're talking about Hall of Fame speeches being cut, we're talking about everything and anything on Wrestling Inside of Fabulous Fridays. What a way to wrap up your work week, whether you see us in the afternoon, whether you see us after SmackDown on Friday night when the lights in the Thunderdome go down. Johnny, a lot going on in the world of AEW. Did you have a chance to check out the uh, match? Uh, other than the landmine match, probably would be the most spoken about match in 2021. The blood and guts uh, a la war games match. That's the one where Chris Jericho went off the top of the cage? Yes. I watched that on YouTube. What would you think? Crazy. That was 
He's as nutty as Mick Foley. But I'll tell you what. I don't know if you, you saw the, new, the dirt sheets. <clears throat> Chris Jericho made the comment, I'll never do that again. And I, I don't think anybody should do that again. It was outstanding. That match was great. I thought it was a good match. Well, you know what, Johnny? Uh, to pick it apart a little bit, I think it exposed their production values a little bit. When you had easily shots that were visible of the guys getting ready to blade. Oh, okay. You know, in WWE, yeah, yeah. I, I can't think of many instances where that had happened. Um, I think the guys went in there and went balls to the wall. They gave it everything they had. There were a few spots. I didn't. Uh, have you ever seen a War Games match where the two teams almost line up like two football teams and you try collide. and collide? Only they have two sets of ring ropes in between them from the two rings, which made it a little awkward. You had the big spot where Telly Blanchard apparently stole the referee's key to unlock the cage, and that wasn't even shown on camera because it was during one of those picture-in-picture -picture commercial breaks. Um, you know, where you bill it as a match where you can't get out, I think at least for the first year, maybe don't let them get out. Okay. You know what I mean? I agree with that. You know I what agree I mean? With that. Yep. Because it was... I don't know how it ever became so commonplace in WWE like Hell in the Cell. It's the match you can't escape, and you, they escape in virtually every Hell in the Cell match and wind up on the roof. Right. I think also the angle with Jericho, while it was visually spectacular, I think they also shot it wrong. Okay. Because you could tell very easily that underneath those four gray There's a silver... There's padding there. Oh, my God. Come on. It looked like almost a DVD extra where they show how you do the stunt in the movie. They, they, and again, they're a new company. They're a growing company. They haven't even had TV full-time for two years. But, I mean, there was some, uh, some errors in the way that was shot that could have made a great visual even better. I have to say this, and I, I, don't, I don't know if we've had many discussions about it, what you think about the art of the blade in the world of wrestling, the blood, the color. Red equals go. green. There you go. It's all there. You just said it all. Uh, I'm not a real fan of blading. Really? Um, it has its place. It has its place. And, and, you know, I always say this to people, uh, especially on the indie circuit. Uh, um, I used to work for, uh, I forget the name of the company. I know it. Well, I don't want to get Jerry Briscoe on us. No, so we, won't we, we, we won't Briscoe name him. We won't but, name him. Um, my old thing was, at every match, this guy had to blade. I, I said, what's the point? What, why every match do you have to bleed? Well, that's just what I do. Well, it's not what you do because there's no place in the match for the bleed. Right. Well, I took a ring post. That doesn't mean you're going to get busted open. Well, I took a pipe. That doesn't mean you're going to get busted open. You know, I say when they do the hell in a cell or they do a cage match and your head is raked across that friggin' steel, it's supposed to be razor sharp. There's where you want a little color. Elimination chamber. There's where you want some color. You know, that's when you want the person to say, holy shit, this is real. This guy is looking, he's bleeding. But to blade for the sake of bleeding? And, you know, you remember how dangerous that is. Sometimes it's tape between well, the fingers. I have to say this. Do you remember the bloodbath between Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton? I believe it was SummerSlam 2000. Yep. 16 or 17, where, geez, you know, we're not gonna, we don't blade in WWE. We're just going to have Lesnar try and bust Randy, o Randy Orton open up like he's a piece of fruit. And the concussion that Randy Orton had from that, that was, uh, I mean, just puddles and puddles and puddles of blood. Is it safer to put, take a little razor blade, Nick, and nick your head while you take some aspirin to well, try and get some flow? Or to have someone like Brock Lesnar try and bash your head in to get blood. Actually, that blade is about this big. It's about that thin. That's all you need is and the little corner. Tape, it's taped between yeah. the fingers like this. So you do that when you want to, when you want to color or you want to bleed. I, I will never forget Vince McMahon when he bladed. Do you remember that match? Yeah. He went up to the side of his head and he cut the vein. And you know what? You can say what you want about Vince, but that man's a trooper. Yep. I'll tell you what. He don't give up. The blood is literally squirting out of his head, and I'm going, this guy's going to bleed to death in the ring. First of all, it's unsafe. Secondly... But how, how unsafe is it, Johnny, compared well, you to trying to do it hard way? You you, 
I wouldn't do it the hard way. That's just crazy. Well, that's, With a chair. For the few times you see it in WWE occasionally, you know, usually a Brock Lesnar match, they try and go about doing it the hard way. And no. I think that's dangerous. That's concussion You can city. kill somebody. You, you can take, kill somebody. You're talking, uh, granted, it's, is it the safest thing to do in the world? No. But if you take a little piece of a blade and you do a little couple of cuts, that's not... But it's not a little... I'm telling you now, it's not a little piece. It's usually about that long. You need that full blade so you can get that cut. Then when you get that disposal of that blade, it either goes back in the referee's hand, right? Yeah. You don't want to have that. Or when you roll to the ring side, it's disposed of off the side of the right. ring. There's always a danger of that being left somewhere. True, true. And the other danger you have, and, and especially now, blood in, in, in... I remember I did a show for Chris Sotaro, uh, and it was Gino Martino, the man with the hottest head in the world. And, and he's, he's in the Guinness Book of World Records. He is. Um, against Abdul the Butcher. You know, I, I remember we're back there, and Abdul's a hell of a guy. I mean, he's a funny man. He's great. Likes cigars. Got that barbecue. Um, he loved to share his razor blades and give people hep C. He was a good guy. Let me tell you something. <laughs> we come out of the back. Gino and I are coming out. Next thing I hear Gino yell at me, say, get out of the way. He come out with a fork and busted him open the hard way. The hard way, Martino's head was bleeding. And then Gino grabbed the fork. Next thing I know, there's blood all over the place. Abdul is so heavy, he can't get in the ring. Okay, here's all these fans around these blockades, and there's blood going everywhere. And I'm going, I'm out of here. I told the fans, move back. You don't want to get into this on you. And I said to Sitar after that match, I said, you know, that was very dangerous. How about if one of these fans got spattered with blood? It's not a good thing. You've got to be very, very careful. And then you had to go out and wash everything with bleach. Right. It's crazy. So, you know, if there's a place for it, I'm an advocate. I really am. I'm always an advocate for anything in any wrestling match that makes sense. But I'm not an advocate just for the sake of, like I said, this one guy, every friggin' right. match. Yep. What are you doing? Taping up, getting ready. It's in your pants, get in your tights, getting ready. You know, please. Uh, I think if you're a promotion and you do it two or three times a year to try and set up a big sense. angle or a, or a blow off to a big feud, I think it really adds yeah, I, to the presentation. No, I to do it on a regular basis for no reason, Stupid. it's almost like title it's, changes. Right. It, it has no value. It doesn't help. It almost hurts. Ah. My opinion. No, but you, you actually, you enjoyed the match? I thought it was done, uh, well, well done. I thought there was a good storyline there. Um, again, I looked at the same production value as you did when I'm looking at this thing, and I'm going, oh, well, I can see that. Nobody's going to get hurt there. Um, but yet, some of the stuff that WWE put together, when they get thrown off the stage, there might have been a pile of tables and chairs oh, there. Oh, sure. But you know, with, you know the, I, I mean, the one that scared me with, when, when John went through the spotlight. That, yeah, that really, we mentioned that not ooh, too long ago. Wow, yeah. wow. But I, all in all... I think they did a good job. Um, it was a great effort. Yeah, and I would agree. A great effort. Did it come off as a 200% match? Probably not. I think uh, the other problem was, Johnny, it didn't belong on TV. It, where they had to hit cut to so many commercials with picture in picture. Should have been live. To tell the true story, I think it should have been on pay-per-view. Then you don't miss Tully Blanchard stealing the key, and you're wondering, how the hell did these two guys even get out of the ring? I agree. And climb to the top. You know I what agree. I mean? I agree. If it was pay-per-view uninterrupted... You I get think the that, whole show. Right, I agree. Right, no, I'm with right. you. I'm with you. But you know what? It's, it's a learning curve for them. They still are a new promotion. People sometimes don't forget that. Tony Khan has not been in professional wrestling for 20 years. AEW, I believe, officially launched with that uh, Memorial Day weekend pay-per-view in 2019. Their weekly TV series didn't premiere until October of 2019. But I want to throw this. I'm going to pass you the basketball, Johnny. Do you think that... <laughs> When AEW launches its second primetime show later in 2021, they're going to run into the same problem that really helped destroy WCW as far as overexposure goes. And to an extent, it really hurt WWF for three years until they decided to go with the brand split, uh, where you have, instead of once a week seeing these stars, now they're on twice a week. And you have even less of a reason to go out of your way to try and watch and see them. Well, all I'm going to say is this, and maybe I'm not looking at it the right way,
But now you've got the challenge from the Japanese wrestler to uh, their champ. Uh -huh. I think you're going to see the intermingling of promotions. Really? So you're not going to see the same guys every single show. Twice Do a week? There you go. I think that they're smarter than that. You can already see the blending of that happening. You go, ah, oh, here we go. He's gonna, Moxley's going to face the same guy. Uh-uh. Surprise. Didn't happen. The invasions. I mean, there's some brain work there. You know, um, I think they missed the boat. NXT should have had a complete takeover of SmackDown. That would have been nuts. You know, or, it would have been interesting, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it seems to me that the, the innovation and thought process in professional wrestling has kind of gone out the window. They take fans for being stupid, and they're not. That's why Raw is down again. Even though it's the number one rated show on cable, it's down again. SmackDown's going down again. NXT get beat up by AEW. You know what? Please, people in WWE, listen. Listen. Doesn't seem to be happening. Well, I hope that AEW does not go the route of overexposure because it wouldn't be good for them. They're trying to, you know, really make inroads, not only in the world of wrestling, but the world of cable television. Even though the episode of Blood and Guts um, was the out of the last month, it was their third lowest rated show. That night, it happened to be the highest rated show on all the cable TV. Mm. So that's really a, a coup under their cap. I believe it was the first time. Yeah. Uh, I, again, I think you're going to see some surprises. Um, I don't think that they're completely stupid to looking at the shows that already exist. I, I'm sure that you'll see some interpromotional play there and people from other promotions coming in. All right. Well, you heard it from John Cena Sr. himself. You know, it's very interesting. You have a man guiding the ship in WWE who's in his mid-70s. And in AEW, you have a man that, you know, he's, I believe, a couple of years younger than me in his late 30s. So uh, interesting points of view and how they operate their organizations. Uh, different reactions from the fans. But fans, when it comes to reaction, we want your reaction. If you're watching during the premiere on Fridays, leave your thoughts in the premiere chat. Otherwise, leave your thoughts in the comment section below so we can catch up. See what you think about all of the great topics we discussed this week. Don't forget, the Super Chat button is open. Help us keep the lights on. Don't forget to tip the bartender. Share the links across social media. It really helps. Uh, we are humble enough, Johnny, to know that there are millions of fans, especially those from the 80s that love that boom, those that love the Monday Night Wars and the Attitude Era, that left once sports entertainment became, quote-unquote, too entertaining mm. and less wrestling. I think once they find our shows, they'll love our shows. When we get those messages saying, so happy I found your channel, it's such a great feeling to know that there are new fans out there that find us and they find the great interviews that we do, whether they be current events or historical topics. When you guys love what we do, it makes it worthwhile because, believe me, it takes a lot of work to, to make this happen. Another way you can help folks again... The, the eBay store is open 24-7. Forget about coronavirus. We have got wrestling merchandise galore from superstars of every era. But more important, and probably the most important thing we're trying to do right now, is grow not just the Boston wrestling fans, not just the Boston wrestling fan base, but the Boston wrestling MWF family. Over on Patreon, for about the cost of his cup of coffee, you get early ad-free access to Wrestling Insiders, and we really are going to be changing the wheel with the Patreon coming up, especially with these New Jack episodes uh, headed into the summer. The format is really going to change with how we do things on Patreon and YouTube, which I think the Patreon fans are going to love. You also get the Boston Wrestling Studio Shoot Interview DVD library that's been seen by millions online, millions more on the Howard Stern Show, thanks to Sheiky Baby. You got some Patreon exclusives, and you have the knowledge that you, yes, your fine self, is helping keep professional wrestling legends working. To me, that is one of the great benefits of having a studio like this. Guys that are, you know, getting up there and maybe their time in the ring should be done, but they're still trying to hang on because financially they need it. Let them come to the studio, tell their stories to you guys, do autograph signings, cyber signings, however you want to describe them online. Let's keep the wrestling legends working safe. Let's just have them come sit, talk, create a little wrestling history that you guys can enjoy for decades to come. It means a lot to me. 
I've been a proud member of the Cauliflower Alley Club and affiliated with them since 1995 for the great work they do for wrestlers in need. This is my version of what the Cauliflower Alley Club does, is this studio, to be able to take these gentlemen in these ladies in some cases where we've had Vicky Guerrero and we attempted to have one of Johnny's friends with us once that didn't go so well, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who might that be? Uh, as Deborah McMichael said in the car. Oh, okay. Does it begin with a T? Yeah, it does. <laughs> All right. All right. I but John, you. again, so head on over to patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. You'll have the pro wrestling time of your life. And again, you'll have the knowledge that you're helping keep these wrestling legends working. So for John Cena Sr., I'm Dan Marotti. Until we speak again, folks, you and yours be well. Stay healthy. Good night. The World Wrestling Federation was live at the Cape Cod Coliseum in South Yarmouth, Massachusetts, Monday, June the 4th, 1984. In the opening contest, Mr. X beat Fred Marzino. Salvatore Balomo with the win over Duke of Dorchester, Pete Doherty. Tony Gurria defeated Ron Shaw. Greg the Hammer Valentine victorious over Chief J. Strongbow. Superfly Jimmy Snuka battled the Iron Sheik to a double countout. And in the main event, Sergeant Slaughter beat Dr. D. David Schultz. If you were in South Yarmouth Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our world-renowned Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports in the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join Rotating Legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times join our growing family at patreon.com backslash boston wrestling expect the unexpected in 2021